Hi guys. You might remember I bought this toy tank in a charity shop uh, a few months ago with the intention of converting it to radio control at some time. Uh, what can we show you? It cost me £2.99. It does a few things. So, that's all those buttons on the top there. I checked inside it after I'd bought it, and it does use two separate motors to drive the tracks, so it should be fairly easy to convert it to radio control using an ESC to drive, a separate ESC to drive each track. Um, so that's probably what I'll do. I'll probably do that first and then later see if we can intercept the wires so we can get some of these features working, the flashing lights and the sound. But I think the easy thing is to do the modification first so we can drive the tracks separately. Quick check inside in the battery compartment and it uses four size C batteries. So that's four times one and a half volts. So it's expecting to run on 6 volts so there should be no problem using a 7.4 volt LiPo battery to drive it a 2S Got plenty of room inside this is the two motors so with a bit of luck we'll be able to intercept them and make them drive in opposite directions Certainly the tracks can move in opposite directions. Just a quick close-up of the connections to the motors. At the moment they're common together. So we've got a single feed driving both motors at the same time. So if I just desolder them here, I should be able to put separate feeds to each motor. I'll use some of these standard LiPo connectors so that I can just plug them straight into the ESCs. This is just a bit of a temporary lash up at the moment. We've got a RC receiver there. We've got a ESC there. We've got another ESC there. I've got a V-tail mixer there that's mixing the output from the receiver from the elevator and aileron controls to control the motors or the motors for driving the tracks. I apologize for the ringing noise but that's the noise that the ESCs make when they're driving the motors. I'll just lift it up and we'll give it a bit of forwards which I think is that direction. Hopefully you can see both tracks are moving forwards. I'll give it a bit of backwards. Both going backwards. Give it a bit of left. And they're going opposite directions. Give it a bit of right. And they're going opposite directions in the other way. So that looks like a total success. I'll turn it off again so it's a bit quieter. That's probably as far as I'll go in this video, but I'll tidy it up because it's a bit inconvenient having to take the top off to get to everything. Um, I'm using two LiPo batteries there at the moment to feed the two separate ESCs, and I should probably be, be able, I should probably be able to get away with one LiPo battery and use a splitter to put the power into the two ESCs. So I'll look at that in a minute. 
Uh, what else? I think that's about it for now. So all the rest of these wires, these are the ones that do the sound effects. So I'll see if I can figure out some way of making use of those sound effects. Whether I do that by the um, normal transmitter and receiver, or whether I use a separate infrared controller to do that, which would be quite easy to do as well. So I'll just run through that again. We've got the two motors in the back here feeding into two separate ESCs. The two ESCs are feeding into a VTEL mixer. The VTEL mixer fitting into the transmitter, uh, receiver. And as I say, two separate LiPo batteries. Just as a very quick test, I've just rested the lid back on, or the top back on. It's not screwed in place. But we should be able to forwards, backwards, right, left, it's a bit fast doing the turn, So, it works. A bit more work to do though.